have to come by the store and sing for me. <laughs> you know how, what happens when you start to prepare for something? Everything comes in your face. Yeah. You know, everything hits the fan. Yeah. And today I'm talking about allowing. Can you hear me okay and see me okay? Yes. And my friend said, allowing what? I said, allowing. Mm. And then someone else said, oh, well, I'll just allow my dishes to get done. And I'll just allow my kitchen to be dirty. Mm. That's not the kind of allowing <laughs> that I'll be talking about. And then I went into uh, my business. And outside camping again were homeless people. Mm -hmm. Well. That's a little difficult to allow. And um, so I went through my own grievances <laughs> and talking to them. And so anyway, that's resolved. But it's over and over again mm -hmm. that we have these challenges once we step out, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. Once we step out, those challenges start coming in. And sure enough, what did I find in the April Daily Word was an article. And it says, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Now, the first thought that you have about that is, oh yeah, what's in it for me? What do I get out of it? Me, 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 narcissistic me. <laughs> and you have to go farther than that. Because this was a great article by Reverend Steve, and he says that um, it's, he says, what I want you to look at is that this word called problem means to move forward. Hmm. And he said, whenever something is unfair and it happened to him in school, he said, all of my height five foot and two inches, would boom out a deep voice, I would say, what's in it for me? You can almost see this guy doing that. And so he tells us some challenging experiences and summarizes it in this way. He says, if you're facing a problem, ask what's in it for me? Surrender into the answer. I don't know. Become a nothingness. Surrender and let something new come up for you. That something will bring you a solution that will move you forward. Nature abhors a vacuum, yes. says Emerson. Yes. Yes. Service is our theme. Mm -hmm. As we give, we give, we create a vacuum and it has to return. Yes. In all ways. Giving is receiving. Yes. And so today we're going to talk about that transformation. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about how the soul evolves slowly sometime. And in the Greek word, psyche means soul. And so it's symbolized by a butterfly. Did you wonder why all these butterflies are all over? <laughs> and as the soul evolves slowly, we know that there's um, hope for us, but we have to be patient. Patience is everything. And so um, it's interesting because I brought this little book, Hope for the Flowers, and um, it's a wonderful little book because it's about two butterflies that were caterpillars. And these caterpillars, aren't these the cutest they are? But uh, uh, some people think they look like a bookworm, but that's okay. <laughs> it's close enough, isn't it? <laughs> and so these two caterpillars are yellow and striped. How many of you have read this book? 
Don't you love it? Thank you. It's really for adults as well as kids, aren't it? Isn't it? And so yellow is the female and uh, stripe is the male. And so all of these butterflies are climbing up these poles. They don't know where they're going or why they're doing it, but they're all climbing and climbing. And so yellow and stripe meet. And they step on each other's heads and all of these things. And so finally, Yellow makes a decision and comes down. She says, I'm not going to do this anymore. And she tries to talk Stripe into it. No, he has to go back and see, you know how the male is sometimes. <laughs> That's a joke, but nobody Because <laughs> it wasn't funny. <laughs> Determination. That's why we have the Columbus and all the adventures. Mm -hmm. They keep adventuring it out. Okay, you're redeemed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is a, a, so great because this is yellow. He uh, came up, up on a gray-haired uh, caterpillar who told her about becoming a butterfly. And she asked, well, how do you become one? Well, you must want to fly so much that you're willing to give up being a caterpillar. Mm. 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 Interesting. You remember this? Yes. <laughs> you mean to die, she asked? Well, yes and no, he answered. What looks like you will die, mm. but what's really you will still be alive. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. And so she changes and moves up and finds him at the top, and it's a beautiful ending. And the fullness of our soul evolves in the same way. Yes. As from the larva to the um, caterpillar to the chrysalis to the <coughs> butterfly. Yes. My friend came in last week, and he used to be a thought they'd be here this morning. I sent postcards to everybody, Celia. <laughs> and um, they'll come later because, uh, or maybe next week. But uh, he was saying, you know, the caterpillar is the biggest consumer there is. Hmm. They just eat and eat and <coughs> eat all the time. Mm -hmm. And they can barely get around. They keep eating. They move so slowly. And so um, there was this big poster with a butterfly on it, and it said, your soul is your greatest work of art. Mm -hmm. And here on the bottom, I almost called you to make one, Danny. And here at the bottom is an empty cocoon. Mm -hmm. You have to leave that cocoon behind mm -hmm. because there is a spiritual art of cocooning too and so if you lose your life for my sake you will find it said Jesus Hallelujah. now is that what this means you'll find out more mm -hmm. it's not our it's a, not a yes and a no we don't die no. we change form yes. Yes. Rumi said why are you still crawling you're supposed to fly Hallelujah. remember that we're supposed to fly, not crawl on the ground and eat and eat and get bigger and bigger and slower and slower. I'm talking to myself there. <laughs> Soul making can't bypass the cocoon. We've got to go through the cocoon stage. And what really matters most is what are we really? What are we transforming into? St. Teresa said, Oh, greatness of God, truly I tell you, the soul doesn't recognize itself. Mm. Sometimes we go through painful experiences. Mm. That's a soul experience. Yes. We move through it. Carl Jung said in a very uh, lengthy article about our stages of life, he says the first part of our life is the morning 
he called it the morning stage. And that's the time when we're relating and we're orienting ourselves to the outer world by developing an ego. And then the afternoon stage is for adapting to the inner world by developing the full true self. So that in-between part, that mid-life mid part is like a difficult birth. Some people that have become addicted and they're ready to move on, there's no moving on. We read every day in the paper because they're addicted. You know, what can I get? Just like strife. What's up there for me? We don't even know what's there. This older man came in the other day. He says, I've worked all my life, and now I'm retired, and my body's too tired and old to go anywhere. What have I done all this work for? So it makes us think, doesn't it? You know, it makes us think, what are we striving so hard for in this morning session of our life. Mm. Remember, maybe you don't remember, I remember how every little piece of furniture, all of the things with our children, all that time in the morning of our life was so important, mm -hmm. so important. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the place like, for what? Yes. You know, we keep going to school, we keep efforting, we keep sacrificing to get to the top. And there's nothing at the top. They don't know what's at the top. You know, I saw from Unity, it must have been from uh, Reverend Joanne's husband, that beautiful YouTube. And the beautiful, if you haven't seen the message that they send out, it's beautiful on the speakers and everything. Well, it was on Stephen Hawkins. Do you see that? Anybody see that? It is wonderful. It's a YouTube. And Stephen Hawkins, you know, he's one of my favorite. He is, um, he's supposed to die years ago, but he's still alive. And he communicates completely from a little muscle here in his mouth. And he had this mathematician come in so he could find out how to reverse all of the black hole theory. So he came up with a new theory so that that is reversed, what went in the black hole. It explains it much better than I'm explaining it. And um, he had this conversation with Shirley MacLaine and her new book, What If? And he says, um, he said, he still doesn't believe in God. He's looking for God mm -hmm. in the universe, I guess. I love him to death, but you know, Butterworth and Discover the Power Within You. Yes. Uh, years ago, remember, he uh, said, we look at the mountains, we look in the ocean, right. where's God? The kingdom of heaven Hallelujah. is here. Yes. Lo here, lo there, the kingdom of heaven is here. Yes. Even it's not.